Hola, welcome. My name is Erica Olmos and today I'm going to show you how I made these dress form arms. In my last video, I showed you how I made this dress form using a pattern that I bought from Bootstrap Fashion. And I'll link that up here if you haven't watched it so you can check it out. Now in this video, I will show you how I drafted the pattern to make these arms using a tutorial by Sophia Hines that I'll link down below so you can follow along if you want to make your own. And just a heads up, I did encounter some problems when I made these arms for the first time and that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video because I figured if I had a problem with some measurements, you could have a problem with some measurements and maybe I could be that young one. And be like, wait, slow down. And I know that probably doesn't make any sense if you're the type of person that speeds when you see a yellow light. But my point is that maybe I can give you something to think about before you proceed. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's get started. First step is to gather all the measurements you will need. Measurement A is the distance between the shoulder apex and the elbow. Measurement B is the distance between the shoulder apex and the inner elbow. Measurement C is the elbow circumference. Measurement D is the distance between the inner elbow and the wrist. Measurement E is the wrist circumference. Measurement F is the bicep circumference. Make sure to measure both of your biceps. One might be slightly bigger than the other. Go ahead and use the largest measurement. Measurement G is the distance from the bicep point to the inner elbow. Measurement H is the forearm circumference. I measured the widest part of my forearm. Measurement I is the distance between the inner elbow and the point where you measured your forearm circumference. And lastly, I went ahead and measured my sleeve cap. This measurement wasn't included in the original tutorial, but I think it's an important measurement to have that I did use later on. And just a tip, measure yourself as many times as you need to. The measurement you get more frequently will most likely be the correct one. If you can, have someone help you measure yourself. Or at the very least, use a mirror. Up next, I recommend you figure out some math and fractions before you start drafting the pattern. It's not something I did, but it is something I wish I would have done. So... Working with the circumference measurements, we need to find measurements that will be used for the inner arm and the outer arm by finding the one-third and two-thirds of each measurement. If your decimals start looking a little crazy, just round up or down to the nearest eighth measurement and use that number. I will show you what I mean by that. Let's start with measurement C, the elbow circumference. My measurement is 11 inches and I need to find one-third that will be used for the inner arm and two-thirds that will be used for the outer arm. 11 divided by 3 equals 3.66666667. That looks like a crazy looking decimal. So I'm going to round to the nearest eighth measurement and use 3.625, which is the same as 3 and 5 eighths. And that will be my measurement for the inner arm. All I have to do to get the measurement for the outer arm is subtract 3.625 from 11 inches. That will equal 7.375, which is the same as 7 and 3 eighths. I followed the same formula to find the measurement for my wrist circumference. My measurement is 6.5. Divided by 3, that is 2.166667. And again, that looks like a crazy looking decimal. The nearest eighth measurement is 2.125, which is the same as 2 and 1 eighth. That will be the inner arm measurement. And 6.5 minus 2.125 will give me 4.375, which is the same as 4 and 3 eighths. And that will be the measurement for the outer arm. And again, I followed the same formula to find the measurements for my forearm circumference and the bicep circumference. And now that's done, we can begin drafting. We need to draft five pattern pieces to make one arm. The armhole base, cut one cell fabric or cut two if you want to insert cardboard. The inner arm, cut one cell fabric. The outer arm, cut one cell fabric. Wrist base, cut one self fabric or two if you want to insert cardboard. And the shoulder extension, cut two self fabric. The armhole base is already done if you use the bootstrap pattern to make your dress form. Just trace out this piece, add seam allowance, 
and your first pattern piece is done. But if you don't have this piece, you can very easily trace around the armhole plate of your dress for making sure to mark the shoulder, side seam, front, and back notches. Here I'm working with the armhole piece with no seam allowance. I'm folding the piece in half horizontally so the ends meet to find the center and then folding it vertically to find the center. The vertical line will be my grain line and the horizontal line will be the center line where the inner and outer arm pieces will meet. Starting out by drawing a grain line on my pattern paper, I'm placing the armhole base pattern on top of my line, matching the grain lines and tracing around it. Making sure to transfer the shoulder front, back and side seam notches and center line. I'm drawing a line at the top of the armhole perpendicular to the grain lines. Then drawing parallel lines on each side of the armhole, making sure to connect through the center line of the armhole. Working on the back of the arm, I'm extending the line from the top down to measure A, the elbow. Working on the front of the arm, I'm extending the line from the top down to measure B, the inner elbow. Next, I connect points A and B and from the center, draw a perpendicular line down to measurement D, the wrist, and draw another line perpendicular to line D. Using the inner wrist measurement, I'm drawing a line that is half on each side. Next, I can connect the inner wrist line to points A and B. From the center elbow point, I'm drawing a line to the bicep measurement G. Next, using the inner bicep measurement, I'm making a line that is half the width on each side. Next, using the inner elbow measurement, I'm making a line that is half on each side. I guess I forgot the forearm for a bit, but using the curved ruler, I'm drawing a line making sure to connect all points. Okay, now I remember the forearm. I drew a line from the center elbow line down to measurement I. And using the inner forearm measurement, I'm drawing a line squared to measurement I. Now using the curved ruler, I'm drawing a smooth line that connects all three points. Moving on to the outer arm. Starting with the outer arm bicep measurement, I'm making a line that is half on each side. And now the outer elbow measurement. Then the outer forearm measurement. And finally, the outer wrist circumference. Using the curve ruler, I'm now connecting the outer points to make smooth clean lines for the outer arm. At this point, above the outer bicep line, I'm just estimating what my line will be. I decided to keep that same measurement distance from the inner arm to the outer arm and just extend it to the center armhole guideline. The distance was 2 and 5 eighths, so I'm measuring that up from the inner arm line on both sides of the arm. The instructions suggest to add 1 inch around the top half of the armhole to add ease. Last thing will be to connect the outer side lines to the top ease line. I recommend you trace and cut out the inner arm pattern and use it as a guide to draw a connecting smooth line. Remember these seams will be sewn together so the lines need to be a continuous smooth line. Here I'm lining up the bicep lines and matching the inner front with the outer front and guiding from the inner armhole line. I'm drawing a curved line that meets the ease line. So you can actually be done with the outer arm here. Just add seam allowance and move on to the next piece. Or maybe not. So now you'll have to decide uh, how to cut the outer sleeve. You can cut it with by using just ease um, and that's actually what I did the first time and I cut both arms with ease and what ended up happening was I ended up making these sleeves that had these shoulders that looked like boulders and I thought maybe I had shoulders like that but I don't because I measured myself and then I measured around the dress form with the arms and I had like four inches extra so then I knew that I had to put some darts in it. So you could go about it that way. You can make it with ease and decide how much you have to pinch out. Or the second option is to take a couple of more measurements. And this is actually where that sleeve cap measurement is very important. And put two darts in there and you won't have to deal with any of the ease. And 
Um, you can decide what way to do it, also depending on the shape of your shoulder. If you do have shoulders that are more strong looking, fuller looking, then you ease will work for that. Um, but if you don't, then you should use the darts. And now I'll show you how I changed up my pattern to include the darts. I'm starting out by drawing a horizontal line at the base of the armhole. Now using the sleeve cap measurement, I'm going to extend that vertical guideline up making a perpendicular line from that point. Next you'll need to take at least three measurements for your upper arm. Approximately halfway up your sleeve cap, measure the distance from the front to back of your arm. Do the same one inch above and one inch below the center line. Next, transfer those lines to your paper. One thing to note, you will need to add that small amount coming from the inner arm measurement below the center line. Starting with the lower line, I want to see how long the darts need to be. I want to measure the total width, making sure to include the inner arm measurement. I measure a quarter at the back and one eighth at the front. The total of the outer arm is 10 and 3 eighths, plus the 3 eighths of the inner arm is 10 and 3 quarters. My measurement for this point needs to be 10 inches. At this point, I have 3 quarters excess to think about. I'm spacing in the center of my darts four inches apart. I'm drawing two lines two inches parallel to the center line and extending them up. Now I can divide that extra three quarters between two darts on this lower line, three eighths on each dart. Now I'm jumping over to see how much excess I have that needs to be taken in from the top of the sleeve. A reminder that all this needs to be sewn into the armhole. The outside of the curve without darts measures six and a half inches on each side and the top half of the back armhole measures four and a half inches and the front measures measures four and a quarter inches. Doing a little math here, there is an excess of four and a quarter inches that needs to be taken in between the two darts. Each dart will take in two and an eighth inches. Now from the line above the center line, I'm measuring half an inch on each side of the darts to create curved darts. Using a curved ruler, I'm connecting my points and drawing curved dart legs. Next, working on the center line, I'm going to check the width of my line to see if I need to add or subtract to match my measurement, which needs to be eight and a half inches. So from the center, I'm measuring four and a quarter inches, skipping over the dart intake. Next, measuring the top line, my measurement is seven and a half. Starting from the center, I'm measuring three and three quarters on each side, skipping over the dart intake. Next, I will fold my darts close to draw a new curve at the top of my sleeve that will be a smooth continuous line when the darts are sewn. From the shoulder line, I want to connect this new line to the new points I've made that match my measurements. I'm using the cutout inner arm pattern to help me draw this line connecting it to the new point. Same thing on the back outer arm, folding the dart, making the new curve, smoothing it out with the ruler, and checking it again. All these lines and marks are kind of confusing, so I'm tracing out my lines with a marker and erasing all the other maybe confusing pencil lines. Oh, and I did double check the measurements for the lower line since the lines did come in a little on the outer arm. I did end up taking in a little less at the end of the dart. It's always good to double check. And finally, we're adding seam allowance. I'm adding 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance to all my pieces. You can add whatever seam allowance you feel comfortable with. And last thing before we move forward, walking the patterns and adding notches. The most important thing to note will be on the back seams. The outer arm will need to be eased into the back inner arm. Notch the forearm line and the bicep line with double notches so you know it's the back. This area between the forearm line and the bicep line will need to be eased in. On my pattern, the inner arm front seam is a little bit longer than the outer arm but not by much. That can be eased in as well. Notch the shoulder at the top of the sleeve, the side seam on the inner arm, and the front and the back notches that you'll need to match to the armhole base. Okay, now moving on to the wrist cover. Super easy. My wrist measurement is six and a half inches. Being that our wrist is kind of oval shape, I want to measure my approximate wrist diameters. My wider width is two and a half inches, my narrower width is 1 and 5 8 inches. Next, I'm drawing a graph centering my two diameters, 2 and a half as my x-axis and 1 and 5 eighths on my y-axis. 
Next, I need to figure out how long I need to make my connecting curves to add up to my circumference. I'm taking the six and a half inches divided by four for each quadrant. And since I'm recording from my iPhone, you can watch me do long division. And my curve needs to measure an inch and five eighths on each quadrant. Now I'm going to sketch out a curve that I like and that fits that measurement. I like that line, so now to transfer it, I'm going to fold my graph in half and trace the line with my tracing wheel. I'm double checking that it still measures correctly and I'm folding it in half the other way to finish up the wrist cover. Now for some matching notches. I'm taking my inner arm pattern wrist measurement, centering it on the wrist pattern to mark matching notches. I'm adding my seam allowance. I'm adding a center notch on the outer arm to mark the center of the outer arm pattern, making sure the notches match and we are done with this piece. Now the very last pattern piece is the shoulder extension so you can attach your arm to your dress form. Again, this is super easy. All you need is your front and back bodice pieces. Line up the shoulder sewing lines and trace out a shape that you like. I drew mine from front notch to back notch and it extended to half of the shoulder width. Trace out the shape, add seam allowance, and you're done. Yay, that's it. We've drafted all of our pieces. I feel like this is a pretty long video, so stay tuned for part two where I'll go over the stitching and construction of the dress form arm. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.